Hello, welcome back to another A to Z of archaeology. Now, it occurs to me that I've been neglecting a very important part of our ecosystem. Plants! Yes, so this week we're looking at the letter S. And S stands for seeds, or in a broader sense, botanical remains. Now, the study of plants may not immediately strike you as being an archaeological pursuit, archaeology being the study, after all, of human beings and their past. But plants and the environment in a broader sense have always been the context in which human histories have played out. If we want to fully understand how people lived in the past, and to a certain extent how we continue to live today, we always have to try and understand or reconstruct the world in which people were living. Now, plant remains take uh, many different forms. Archaeologists can tell a lot about past environments by studying the plants which thrive there. When people began farming, this adds a new layer of complexity to the relationship between people and their environment. The different ways in which we treat plants and their remains leave very particular residues in the archaeological record. Botanical remains survive best in waterlogged environments, and this soil can be processed through a series of sieves and water flotation tanks to release as much of the organic material as possible. The study of these remains can reveal a great deal about past environments, and great care is taken to recover them properly and then study them appropriately, often through a microscope. Microscopic analysis of pollen reveals the range of plants living in the environment in the past. The presence or lack of simple algae cells tells us how favourable conditions were to the growth of plant life. Often people burn plant remains, either on purpose or by accident. This can leave rich, charred layers in archaeology, and sometimes shells and seeds which aren't properly burned are preserved as husks, ripe for studying. Seeds, leaves and the remains of plants often float on the breeze and come to land in many places, including the surface of lakes. They then sink to the bottom and become encrusted in successive layers of sediment. This can be recovered by archaeologists and used to study the change of the landscape over time. The study of plants in archaeology has a very broad scope in terms of its application. Once we've identified the remains and recovered them from the various places where we can, the actual use of those remains is surprisingly uh, broad in its scope. Using an auger, archaeologists can retrieve a core of soil, much like retrieving the core from an apple, and lay out the core in succession like a timeline. This gives archaeologists the opportunity to study the sediments at each point along this timeline, and therefore gain a picture of the landscape as it changed over time. By studying the types and the range of plant life observed in these cores, archaeologists are able to understand the progression of plants and therefore the landscape through hundreds and even thousands of years. For example, we can observe a post-glacial landscape stripped almost clean and bare of plants as it develops into a fully matured beechwood forest. Or, maybe, it'll take a tangent and people will move into the area, chop down the trees and start farming. Another area where botanical remains have proved invaluable to archaeology has been the study of crinogs, Neolithic houses suspended above water on stilts. The waterlogged mounds which are often left in the wake of these structures have revealed a great deal about the diets of people who lived in them. The remains of hazelnuts have been discovered, along with barley, and also extremely delicious cloud berries, which make wonderful jam. Archaeologists have recovered emma wheat and spelt wheat, two different types of early cereal being farmed in the Neolithic, and even the weeds recovered tell us how these plants were being picked, low down on the ground and by hand. The presence of flax reveals something of the trade networks and the crafts of these people, and the presence of opiate poppies potentially reveals something about their social lives. Simply by adequately recovering botanical remains, people of the Cranogs are being understood in greater detail. Sorghum was one of the first cereals to be cultivated in the Neolithic, and the study of its DNA is revealing extremely interesting things about the way in which the Neolithic spread throughout the world. Archaeologists like Peter Rowley Conway have been able to extrapolate the spread of agriculture in the early Neolithic from the Middle East up through Europe simply by studying the DNA of sorghum found on archaeological sites across the world. 
In doing this, they have tracked whether people preferred to use only local sorghum when they started farming, or if they were quite happy to let sorghum come in from other parts of the world. This study of the uptake of sorghum hints at the ways in which the idea of farming was transmitted in the early Neolithic. So, the study of plant remains, right the way from pollen through to charred deposits in soil, allows archaeologists to build up a context of the environment around the cultures that they are studying. Without this vital context, we would only ever get half the picture, and that is things that have been made by people. Um, whereas with uh, plant remains, um, we're able to actually understand the effect that people have on the environment around them, and also how the environment affects the people who are living within it. So plant remains and the study of seeds and all sorts of botanical remains is a crucial element of archaeology. So that's been S, seeds and botanical remains. Um, hopefully you found this video useful and or interesting. Um, please feel free to comment below. Naturally, please do subscribe to the channel by pushing the button above and any new videos I uh, put up on this extremely interesting channel uh, will immediately appear on your news. Um, also as well we have a Facebook page, all you need to do is search for Archaeosuit Productions and click like and anything that I can't fit into a video will make it onto the page there. Um, also feel free to send me any questions you might have and I shall get back to you in the forum which is now called the Questions of Doom video series and uh, hopefully you'll find the answers useful. So until next time Thank you very much.